Hi, this is Rob Reynolds, also known as The Fervent Coder. Today we're going to look at the Refresh Database, which will allow us to very quickly sync up our changes to our local database development uh, with our projects. Now, I have no database known as name. And going to see if I have changes coming from my counterparts. It does not appear that I do. So now we're going to take a look at Refresh Database. I have created a console project and named it Refresh Database. And I have added a reference to a project that has Entity Framework migrations in it. And I have an initial migration here. I have also added the roundhouse.refreshdatabase.ef as an entity framework package to this particular project, which bought, brought a whole uh, set of libraries and some code with it. Now, if we take a look at this code, we can see the drop database first is set to true and that we are not restoring a database. That means that we're doing greenfield development. Now, I have a path to SQL scripts here, which is to say that I am keeping my SQL scripts in source control. That path is referenced to this particular project, which is just a class library that has an up folder under a database folder. Could also have other folders uh, for Sprocks views and functions. Now, uh, some of these other options. The next important option here is that my migrations assembly path is this name.dll. That's in reference to this particular uh, project here that I have a reference to it. So I do have my reference. So it will get dropped into my uh, bin folder. Now, I have a database class here and in that I have the name, server, username, and password. Now the name of that is going to be underscore underscore name underscore underscore. And the server is going to be my local uh, database development server. And like I said, the library we're using is based on the source code from roundhouse.entityframework or dash entity framework, which gives off some of this information here. So if you take a look at that out on GitHub, uh, Chuck Norris Roundhouse Entity Framework. Now, I have no migrations. Uh, as SQL, but I do have a migration that's pending, so I need to get that into my uh, source. So I will right click on Refresh Database and I will do a debug. And what this is going to do is bring up the Refresh Database console, which runs Roundhouse to create or restore the database. And then it looks for entity framework migrations that have not been applied yet. And after that, it goes ahead and syncs the database up. As you can see here, I found a uh, a migration that hasn't had a script created yet so it will create that and so in the end if I do a refresh I have a SQL file I can check in and then share with my DBAs or whoever and that is the output of entity framework if I take a look at my database locally I now have a database named the name particular guy and uh, that I have tables in here that are related to my domain objects of course, I have the roundhouse uh, migrations tables, and I also have the entity frameworks migration table for syncing purposes. So now I can check this in. And then share it with my friends. Okay. So now I can say I, I need to sync up changes from somebody else to see if there are any changes. And so I will do a get fetch and rebase if anything comes in. And it doesn't appear that there is anything. So what we're going to do is our particular user here has a first name, a last name, but no middle name. So we need to add that. So let's do that. Let's add a middle name. Okay, so I've added a middle name. Now I need to get that onto my database. Now this is where it becomes really awesome. So if I add 
migration, and this is the workflow for Entity Framework migrations. I'm going to say add middle name. I want that to be verbose. Now, the default project here needs to be the same project where the Entity Framework migrations are happening. It's going to also look at the startup project for an app config file that it can use to uh, tell it where that database is. And so this is going to look at the database. It's going to compare it to our code, and it's going to say, here's the changes. And this is all Entity Framework again. Now, the interesting part here is, now how do I get that synced up and into my database to share with others? Once again, just right-click and refresh database, start new instance. And it's going to drop the database, and it's going to go in and look for new entity framework migrations. It only found one, as you can see here. And then it's going to apply those changes. And so if I go back in here and I, I pull up sample users, we see that there is a middle name now. And now, I also have another file that I can check in. And you can see this is just adding a particular column and updating the migrations table. All right, and so say I'm another guy and I'm coming onto this project and well, let's do this real quick. Let's just drop that database. So I'm coming on fresh. All that stuff is already there for me and I just need to get that database set up, right? And so you can see that uh, this database no longer exists and all I do at this point uh, as a developer coming out of the project is right click and refresh database and I let that run so the same workflow applied over and over and over with the entity framework it didn't find anything to change so it moved on but it went ahead and applied all the changes so now I'm synced up with everybody else Thank you.